Welcome to Just the Two of Us Homestead. We are Colleen and Frank, and we live in the perfect size homestead just for us in southwestern Quebec. Gardening, growing food, and preserving is one of our passions. And our barn animals, we love them so much, they're just like pets. And we're so fortunate to be able to live our lives as we do each and every day is a blessing. Good morning, everyone. I'm doing a huge preservation project for the Every Bits Counts Challenge. And I wanted to get something started right away because it's probably going to take two days to do it. So what I'm going to do is we bought this turkey after Christmas on sale and it wasn't to, never intended to eat as a turkey. I did want to do a preservation project. We never got around to doing it. And this is the perfect time for the challenge. And it's taking up freezer space. And I'm filling the freezer now with other things. So I want to raw pack a lot of the meat. But last year, I canned turkey soup for the first time, which I make a wonderful turkey soup that I've never canned before, just as leftovers. And Frank loved it. So I'm going to do two things with this turkey. I'm going to raw pack the meat and I'm going to make a turkey soup to can using all our vegetables from the garden. But what I want to do is just cook the turkey enough to get the skin uh, cooked a bit because that adds nice flavor to the soup. So I set my oven to really high and all I want to do is crisp up the skin a bit. And that's it. I don't really want to cook the meat or anything. So that's what I'm going to do. So I'm going to take it out, clean it up a bit and do whatever you do to prepare a turkey. I'm going to stick it in the oven. Okay, disclaimer time. I have never done this before as far as taking a whole turkey and canning it and cutting it up. But... I mean, how hard can it be? I'm not going for nice slices and stuff like that. I'm just trying to get chunks of meat into jars, keeping some meat on the bones to make a sauce. I mean, maybe I should have done it when it's more cooked, but I feel it will give a better flavor when it's raw packed because it'll give off all its own like more juices and stuff. But this is going to be a messy procedure. <sighs> One leg. So for sure the soup stuff is going to go in one bowl. Yeah, that one wasn't bad. It's not going to go nearly as far as I hope it would, but oh, I can't get that wing off. I'll just leave them on. Okay, this is going to go in the soup. So we got a little cooked, but that's okay. I'll continue macerating this bird, and then I'll bring you back when I have my pile separated, and I'll show you what I... I'll show you what I'm going to do with it next. This was a 21 pound turkey that was $33, but Aldi had them for a $20 flat fee for all the turkeys. So it was a $20 turkey. I'm raw packing, which means it's not cooked, but I'm also, I'm not going to backfill with water so I'm kind of rebel canning so if you were following the guidelines you would fill it with water but I've done this with my beef and that and because my turkey isn't cooked it's gonna make its own beautiful juice in there what would we use these for well we me more in particular I love hot turkey sandwiches after Christmas or Thanksgiving. That was my dad's favorite thing the next day to have. He looked forward to that more than the turkey itself. Uh, I could make a cold turkey salad. 
I could make turkey pot pie with these. There's many options. So I'm going to wash them all when I'm done. Before I touch the turkey jars again, because I've cleaned everything, I'm only going to put four jars in my canner and it seems silly to run it like that. And it's more efficient to run it with a full canner. I often will take clean jars, just like I would if I were canning something. And I just put my good tap water in it and I, I can water. So for an emergency, I always have a good supply of water downstairs. We often don't buy like the little bottled water. We have big jugs for an emergency, but I always like to have these. So whenever I don't have a canner full, I try and stick a few jars of water in. These are going to process for 75 minutes. I'm using four jars. And into the canner it goes. I don't have a really big stock pot and I'm going to make a really big turkey soup. I do have a stock pot, but this time I want to make a really big soup to can because now that I know how much Frank liked it canned, I want to make a really big batch. So I'm just using my tall canner and yoy. I'll stick him all in there. Don't worry, I'll wipe down the sides and I'll, it's filled with a little bit of water. I'll add more. I'm just going to let this simmer just like this, not adding anything else all day. And overnight it'll go in the fridge. And then tomorrow I'll make the soup and can it. And when the other jars of the meat come out, I'll show you those. And that'll be today's project and tomorrow's project. Doesn't that look beautiful? And it got really cold, but don't tell Frank I put on a sweatshirt because I'm always telling him he's a wussy in the cold. But it got really chilly. So I'll see you tomorrow to do the turkey soup. Bye. Good morning again. Today is day two of the turkey preservation project. I actually didn't put this in the fridge last night. It's way too big and very much heavy. So I kept it on a low simmer all night with the lid on. And now I'm going to strain out all the meat and the bones. It doesn't look very pretty right now, but it's going to be a gorgeous soup. I'll let you see what it looks like and the transformation. It's going to be into a beautiful soup. Sorry, there's a reflection from the lights, but... I know, looks like sludge right now. And I probably will add some more liquid. I have turkey broth canned. And I will probably add more of that as I add the vegetables. All I'm going to do right now is just take out all the bones, all the meat, and get it to a clear broth. And I left quite a bit of meat on this. I've strained it and now we have this beautiful broth. And I will be adding more turkey broth. And with all the vegetables, the color will get darker and richer. Now I'm going to add the turkey meat. I have all my turkey done and now the fun really begins. I just right this minute went and picked some celery. I love lots of celery in my 
any of my soups. I have more in the sink if I need more. I'm going to use up a lot of our smaller carrots that we picked. To me, this is a perfect way to use them up. They're all washed. I may have to still peel a few of those. I have potatoes from our harvest, and I'm just going to chop away and put everything back into the broth or stock or soup or whatever you call it. I'm going to start with the celery because I find fresh celery um, wilts really quickly. Okay, everything's cut up. I'm going to add all my ingredients to the broth. This is all the turkey, and I accidentally almost picked up a, box, a bowl of the stuff for the chickens to put in here. Now, the vegetables, I just guesstimated. I may still have to, to put more. We'll see. Maybe a bit more potato. If I was making this for us to eat fresh, I would use pasta, but you can't can pasta, so I'm using potato. And Frank liked it just as much when I did that. So maybe just a bit more potato, I think. I already have my canner warming up a bit. So everything is in here, my vegetables, my meat, but I don't want to cook it because my vegetables are going to cook while they're being processed. If I cook them now, they're going to turn to mush because this is going to process for pints at 75 minutes. So the only thing I want to do right now is get my broth to taste really good. So... I'm just going to add a few herbs and salt and pepper. Once I get the flavor that I want, it's warm, it's quite hot. And then I'm just going to put it into jars. So it's not going to cook. I just want to get the, the base to taste good. I am going to add two jars of turkey stock that I made last year after Christmas. Only for the color, really. The flavor of the soup already has, like, the turkey flavor. But because I made my uh, turkey stock with onion peels and, like, carrots and that, and I let it cook in the roaster for a long time, it has a nice dark color. So I'm just adding it in to make this look a little bit darker. The stock that I make doesn't have any salt, any seasonings in it, only the vegetables or the bones and meat. So, and I probably will have to play around with this a little bit more than I normally would, because this is a really big pot of soup. So I'm probably putting right now about a teaspoon of salt. I'll probably even add a wee bit more. This is sea salt. But... I don't know, that much oregano, I don't know, maybe a tablespoon. I'm just going to put ha maybe half a teaspoon of basil. And then, I don't know, if you crunched it up a bit more, maybe, I'm a really bad judge of this. I don't know, tablespoon of parsley. And last year, I dehydrated and ground up celery powder from all the leaves of the celery and I didn't think I added enough celery so I'm this is pretty concentrated so I'm just going to add a little bit more and I have some freshly ground pepper for now I'll start with like about half a teaspoon I would probably put a bay leaf or two in, but because I'm not really going to bring this to a boil and it's not going to simmer, there's really no point because I'd put it in and in five minutes I'd be taking it out. OK, 
Okay, I'm going to give it a little taste test. I don't need the vegetables. I just want to taste the broth. It's not really much time to give it a chance, but... It's good. Just needs a little bit more of everything. All right, we are good to go. It's delicious. It's thick. We like our soup thick, like a soup like this. I'd say it's half, I'm splashing. It's halfway between a, a soup and a stew. So my jars are hot, my canner's hot, and my soup is hot. Everything is hot. bubble and vinegar because there is grease from the little bit of fat that I didn't get out of the turkey which adds to the flavor so I don't mind a clean lid a clean band and it's very hot fingertip tight and into the canner. Okay, the last ones are going in. I have 18 pints and my pot is still at least a third full. So I may do the rest in quarts and I'll see you when they're all done. Good morning, everybody. We are now two days after all the turkey canning. I have a debilitating migraine. I get them, but I usually get them in the winter months. And one day I'll explain all about my migraines. It's usually seasonal, but, and you're gonna say, well, if she has a migraine so bad, how is she able to do what she's gonna do today? And I have this superpower, because it even works with my fibromyalgia, that I can, fake it and forge through for a certain amount of time and get something done. And don't worry when I'm finished with what I have to do today, I'm crawling into bed into a dark room and I'm going to curl into a ball and stay there for hours. But whether I film it or not, I have to do what I'm doing today. So I'm going to put a smile on my face. I'm going to try and be as cheerful as possible with you. I'm happy to be here with you. I want to do this. I'm just not feeling so good. So yesterday, um, and my thoughts are going to be all over the place, so I apologize. So the turkey thing got us 18 pints of turkey soup. And if you've never canned meat before, don't be shocked by how it looks. Meat is not the prettiest thing in a jar. That's one of the reasons why in the grocery store it's always in cans, not in glass. Also to protect it from the light, but 
Um, I did four jars of water. I did two quarts of the turkey soup with two jars of water, but Frank already brought them downstairs and he thought it was being helpful starting to bring things down and I didn't have the heart to ask him to bring them back up. So that's what we got 18 quarts of 18 pints of soup, two quarts and four pints of turkey meat from that 20 pound turkey. I'm sorry, Frank's cutting the grass. I hope you can't hear it. And I found the turkey had a really big like carcass. The, In other words, you could have put a lot of stuffing in there. So I didn't find it had a tremendous amount of meat, but for $20, I think I got a lot from it. So I'm really pleased with that. So I'm going to put all this away and show you what we're working on today. So yesterday I didn't technically preserve anything because I wasn't feeling well, but I did start to preserve something and I took a quick little footage of it, but I didn't quite complete it. So I did another tray this morning. I'm roasting my tomatoes for pizza sauce and I've made pizza sauce just by cooking down my tomatoes and every once in a while I like to roast some just for a change and I'm just using the recipe from the Ball or Bernardin um, pizza book from their book. I like their recipe. I've tried others and we like it just fine. But every once in a while, I just feel like roasting them. And it's really easy, except this one I left in the oven maybe a touch too long. And the bonus to roasting them is, first of all, generally the peels come off very easy. The peels, the skins. Let me find one where it'll come off easy. I let these sit out too long. I just did them about an hour ago. So you get these nice peels, which I'm putting here. And then I'm going to put them in my dehydrator and make tomato powder with them. But it'll be roasted tomato powder. So it'll be really good, which I can turn into a tomato paste or just add it to, you know, soup, stews, anything like that that I want. So I already did all of this. I measured out, I'm doing a double batch because it only makes like five or six pints. So I'm just going to finish taking off these skins and then I'm still going to put it through a tomato press because I'm certain I didn't get all the skins off. And I don't want seeds in my um, tomato sauce. And I know I see I'm going to mix up where I'm putting where. So I'll finish doing this. And then as soon as I get to the point where. See, I know I'm going to do that. That's why I'm still going to put it through the tomato press because I'm sure I've put a few skins in with my tomatoes. I'll show you what I'm going to do next. Because I roasted them, I already have a thicker sauce. A lot of the water came off in the roasting process but I want to make it just a touch thicker. So I'm just going to do my little technique there through the strainer just to make it a little bit thicker. We're going to be adding a little bit of lemon juice, not much, but I like a thick tomato sauce, a uh, tomato sauce. I told you my words are going to be, and my thoughts are going to be a little bit scattered today. I like a really thick pizza sauce. I don't want my dough to be watery at all. So 
I'm just going to take off a little bit of the excess liquid. So when I pour it on my pour it, spread it on my dough, it's nice and thick. Now I made a double batch and I don't know if it's just me, but I find whenever I roast tomatoes, for some reason it gives me less volume. Maybe it's my imagination, but okay. I doubled it and the original recipe says it makes four pints. That's why, first of all, I always double it because it's a labor of love, but I would never go through this process for four pints or half pints. I always double it and I will be making another batch and another batch. We eat pizza probably once every two weeks. So we, it's always like a fun food Friday thing. So I even added a few more tomatoes pound wise than what they said. And I find it's always less than what they say. So we need to add, because I doubled it, one cup of lemon juice. Two teaspoons of oregano, so I'll do four. And this is from the garden that I dehydrated. One teaspoon of freshly ground pepper, and it is freshly ground, so I'll do two. One teaspoon of salt, so I'll do two. I'm using pink Himalayan today. And one teaspoon garlic powder, so I'll do two. All right, let's go to the, the fridge. <laughs> let's go to the fridge and cook the tomatoes. Let's go to the stove. So I'm just going to slowly bring this to a boil and then let it simmer for about 10 minutes. Okay, I have a correction to make. The recipe says four pints, not four half pints. So I don't know. I tasted it and that's a pretty potent, because I don't feel I had enough tomatoes. I don't know. We'll see how it goes. I don't think it's going to make near as much as I said. So I could be wrong. I'm never a good judge of this. So four pints would give me eight half pints for one recipe, and I doubled it. So we're going for a half inch headspace. I doubled the recipe pound wise in tomatoes. I even add, I always add more tomatoes than they say. And I was supposed to get four pints with one recipe. And so that would be one pint, two pint, three. I have four pints doubling it and a half pint. I don't get it. And it's very potent because I doubled the ingredients for the flavoring. I don't know if it's because I roasted the tomatoes. I've roasted them before and I don't remember this happening. I know often I find a lot of recipes never, never turn out how they say they're going to as far as the volume of what you get in a jar. And yes, I took off a wee bit of liquid but who wants a runny pizza sauce I don't know where my grabbies are I guess I'm just crabby today so these are going to process for 35 minutes at my altitude there we go. I may attempt to clean up my mess. I may not. We'll see. 
I'll see you back in about 45 minutes because I have to let them rest a bit when I take the lid off. There we go. So that's it for today. As soon as the, I have something in the dehydrator right now. And when that's done, I'm going to put the tomato peels in there. And that'll be for tomorrow's project. So I'll see you then. I'm just going to very slightly spray each rack because the last time I did this, the skin's really stuck. To the trays and these go in my um in my instapot if you guys didn't see my first every bit counts challenge my i don't have a dehydrator these go right into my instapot so i'm gonna put these i'll probably have to do a second round but I'm just going to put the skins like so. And I just put this rack on. There. Hydrator. They put it at 150, but I always turn it down. Um, I'll put it to seven hours and I'll check it. And that's it. So here's the tomato peels. And they're pretty crispy. And I think they still stuck despite my spraying. Well, not too bad. I'm doing it on a white plate so you can see how they look. I'm just going to crunch them up here and then I'm going to put them in my little grinder thing. And I'm sure they're going to go into a tiny little container here, but it It'll still be worth it. It's going to be noisy. There, look at that. It smells delicious and it'll be perfect in so many things. Yeah, the one was cut in half, I guess. but people just put them on the side. Okay, if it's full. I would say it's All full. All right, so let's put this in the video, how we pour it into the bag. I would say it's full. All right, and that's all I have to show. Here's a recap of what I did this week for the Every Bit Counts Challenge doesn't look like a lot but most of it's downstairs. We did the turkey meat in a jar, the turkey soup, the potent pizza sauce. We did peppers for the freezer, the roasted tomato pepper, and I did more pizza sauce and I did a roasted marinara sauce and 
I did more ketchup and I just did a bit of tomato juice with the byproduct of doing some of the tomato, uh, some of the other tomato things. So when I did the other uh, every bit challenge videos, when I said I didn't film every day, this is the other things I would do in between. I just didn't show you. So today is August 28th. And for me, I'm going to kind of end the challenge as far as filming it. I do have one more project, but I'm going to do it on a video on its own because everything else I'm going to do for the next day, a few days, is just repeating what I'm doing here. I'm still smothered, thankfully, in tomatoes, and I'm just going to be repeating it so there's no point in really filming it. And I just wanted to do a sincerely heartfelt Thank you to Jessica at Three Rivers Homestead for creating and hosting this challenge. It's the concept and everything about it is wonderful. And for a small channel like us, it's a wonderful opportunity for exposure. And I wanted to thank her very much. So that's it for us for this week. And until we're together again, take care.